welcome back folks today's video it's gonna be a little bit of a different one uh, I had a lot of people asking about tips lately and here are 10 tips I think that'll take somebody from like learning the game and being pretty decent to being pretty darn good and uh, there are some on here that we've covered before so in down in the pinned comment below I will link the videos to them if you guys want to get more depth in each topic. But first, we're going to start off with everybody knew it was coming that knows the channel. Is that number 10? Don't buy into this. Uh, <laughs> being in the position uh, that I do where I make videos and people are always trying to send helpful tips, I always test everything, even if it's crazy. And I don't recommend doing that if you're just trying to get better at the game. A lot of things you hear, if it sounds crazy, it is. And what I mean very recently, and what I mean within even the last week, I've heard some crazy ones. I'm not going to get too much in depth because I want this to be a half an hour long video. But I even within the last week, I have heard that a female character will win more comps than a male character. Uh, I've heard, again, turning down your drag on your pole, so not using full power on your pole will get you more experience and uh, more uh, uh, money. And uh, I did a video on that where I showed that was not true a long time ago. And some just crazy, absolute crazy stuff. Now, some of it that's out there, like there's an example, it's really hard to prove whether it helps or not. A lot of people will close their game out and reopen it. I'm not one of them people. Uh, you know, I do the tournaments and the comps and i've always live streamed stuff so i can't ever close down my app and i seem to do okay without it but with that being said try to stay away from this guys i cover a lot of games and this game is the uh you know out of the eight games i probably cover this game is just riddled with crazy stuff if it sounds crazy it is crazy probably at number nine it'd be trying new stuff now this isn't just comps or tournaments or anything to do with that if you get better at other fish or something that you're not necessarily good at, for example, if you guys remember, you know, is it two years ago now? I was terrible at oversized fishing, so I challenged myself to learn it. And then by the end of it, um, we were catching new oversized fish that nobody had caught before. And then you can fast forward to this year where we won the two oversized tournaments this year as a group, our friends. And that's coming a long way from something that we didn't know how to do two years ago. I see a lot of people that do still do the same comps they did four years ago. And they wonder why in other comps they don't, you know, or other things that they try to do, they don't do well. Because you, you just need to go out and try new stuff. And then you'll have much better luck. For example, um, I quit doing comps for about a year just because I wasn't having a whole lot of fun and spare time with them. I've been doing them again. And for example, for the today, even uh, I didn't have a ton of time, but I decided to do a comp I've never done before. Uh, right here, I did Bloody Threat, and I got my butt kicked. Never practiced it, never done anything in it before, but I learned a lot in this comp, and I think I'll do better next time for it. Uh, but with that being said, guys, don't be afraid of stuff. Try it. And be honest, guys, that rating, that comp rating, like when I was in the top 50, that comp rating didn't give you anything. That's just a bragging rights type of deal. And today, you know, even today, uh, you know, I lost two positions trying a new comp, but I'm okay with that. Now, some of these are going to be a little bit more on the obvious side for some of the more advanced players, but uh, doing custom comps, um, like we have a custom comp in a few days here, uh, them have taught me more in this game than anything else I've ever done. Uh, sponsored comps give you a chance to talk to other people while they're doing them. Gives you new fish to go after. And um, until I started doing sponsored comps, I didn't do good at anything, to be honest with you. That was a real turning point for me is when I started uh, playing in more sponsored comps. Because I learned how to catch other fish, which again, like the last point, brings you helps you in other fish, guys. At seven, uh, this is one I'm not going to talk about too much because we talked about before, but testing the right weather. So if you're practicing for a comp and you're setting up a custom comp to practice for it, 
Uh, you can go in there. I have one set up, so I can't actually show you guys right now. But you can pick the templates when you're in there. And make sure you're picking the right weather or time uh, for the comp or tournament or whatever you're trying to practice. Just make sure you have picked out the right weather. Because having a, for example, if you're doing a comp on a cloudy day, probably not a good thing to practice it on a sunny day. You're going to get different results. At number six, this one I would have thought would have been more obvious, but uh, I think for people just learning the game, this is one a lot of people don't do, is set your poles up correctly. Uh, for example, in most scenarios outside of a select few comps where recovery speed is the most important thing, you're going to want to set your poles up where your uh, your pole and your liner are about the same strength and your reel is the weakest. So if you can see here on this setup, 46, 46, and 45. Now that might change in the future because there's talk of them changing kind of how that works. But for right now, you want to get your club poles as close to the balance as what you are. I see a lot of people that will put like a 35-pound reel on a somewhat setup like this. And all you're doing is wasting the the amount the use you could get out of this pole in line at number five is using the right pole for the right fish this is what i i see a lot of mistakes in this one a lot uh so i had someone actually have this issue and didn't know they were doing something wrong they said oh i tried the same spots as you i had no luck and i asked them what pole they were using and they were using an aisle chaser on a four pound fish now for a lot of people that played the game a long time, that seems like a very obvious thing. But on a four-pound fish, you don't want to be using an overkill pole. There's no reason for it, and you can get better results on a much smaller pole. At number four and number three, they are respawn times and respawn areas. Now, these are huge within Fishing Planet. I would make an argument that this is probably one of the most important mechanics you have to learn in this game to probably be successful uh now i have a, a video that goes really in depth with these i'm going to leave these uh leave that in the pin comment down below but for right now i'm going to show you really quickly what i'm talking about now for example at alaska this is my favorite place to fish the respawn times for almost all these fish in here are 37 and a half minutes now they can be different between uniques and trophies and not every fish in the game follows this pattern because for example if you spot at uh if you spot for oversized fish they that respawn timer gets broken because you are spotting you can get them a lot quicker that way uh, but for the majority of fish in the game this is how they work they'll have different times and different amounts for example this, as you guys know, is a very common, uh, unique um, sockeye spot here. And if I catch a unique here, I know that from experience, this is 37 and a half minutes before I catch another one. Oh, I might have a decent one on right now. What is this? Uh, trophy. And uh, having that being said, that you know real time is 37 and a half minutes. Now, every fish is different. On their timer and trophies and uniques can be different and there also can be for example in this spot there is two trophies and one unique sockeye uh, to get but then you can come back later and why this is so important is there's a lot of comps out there for example salmon clash I think there's one later today is a 45 minute comp uh, with that being said, that means if you catch something right away in the comp, you can catch it at the very end. And that is very true, and that is helps you out tremendously in that comp. Now, for number three, we're going to use the Chinook as an example, because this is a really good one that a lot of people um, will, will relate to, because a lot of people catch the Chinook up here. So, as you guys know, there are three unique Chinook spots. Well, three pretty widely known ones anyway. There's the top island here. Uh, there is what we call the middle island here. Uh, middle island here. There it is. And the bottom. Now, there are areas 
of effect where you catch one and you can't catch one again. So, uh, and they are different for, again, uniques and trophies. And I did do a video on this, and I will leave that down in the description for people that really want to get into this more. For example, if I catch a unique Chinook here, I cannot catch it down here. I have to get farther away. Now, I can still catch a trophy here. Uh, the, the trophies have a much smaller radius here at Alaska. Uh, but I cannot catch it again. So in order to get two at Alaska in a short time frame, you have to go here and down here. Uh, with that being said, though, trophies, like I said, they can be smaller. So you can get a trophy at each one of these spots. And some spots, like, for example, uh, the uh, sockeye spot that I showed earlier have more than one trophy in them. And that actually can go for uniques as well. For anybody wondering that wants proof of that, if you go to Alaska or if you go to Russia, you can actually catch four unique ass within a half hour in the same spot before you have to wait for them to respawn. At number two, I will be showing you guys recovery rates because this is the most underrated thing in the game. Uh, I did a video on this, uh, but I will be explaining what this is. Uh, but I have done a video I will put down in the description as well for this too. Hopefully I remember to put all these links down there for you guys wanting to learn more about this stuff. But for example... Uh, if you guys don't know what recovery rate is, it is, in fact, different than ratio. A lot of people get these two confused. In real life, uh, the ratio is probably more important. But in this game, recovery is definitely way more important than ratio. Uh, ratio almost means nothing in this game. For you guys that are new to fishing, uh, ratio is just the rounds uh, if you spin your reel around one time, the ratio is uh, when you do that on your reel, that's how many times your reel will spin to each time that you go one turn. Recovery, however, is the amount that gets brought, the amount of line that comes in on one turn. And that's why it's more important in Fishing Planet because in uh, fishing planet your player does not have a strength meter or any way to determine strength so recovery doesn't matter or I mean re re the ratio is not going to matter and they are not the same thing very clearly you can see even from these two I will use these three rods as, or reels as an example uh, this has higher recovery with the same ratio as the 8,000 and the 9,000 so do not confuse the two a lot of people will um, and this plays a huge factor in comps, in tournaments. A big area of the recovery effects is you could be using a much better reel for what you're doing. Uh, I'm going to use an example here that's a very, very clear one. Um, a lot of people use the Kraken 8000. It's a good reel. There's no reason not to. But I'll see people use it on 3-speed. So if you use this reel on 3-speed, you're getting... You have to take three times your recovery because you're doing it three times faster. So it, it is uh, 126-ish, right? That's your recovery rate while using that. Um, now, if you're using that on three speed, you might as well be using, let's say, the spot reel on two speed. That's 120 on two speed. You're getting the same, essentially the same speed reeling in. And what the big differences in that is... When you go to four speed, this is going to recover in a lot quicker. So you're going to be able to pull in the fish a lot quicker on this one uh, than you are on the Kraken on four speed. Even though you're using the same speeds to catch the fish, this one is two speed, this one's three speed, but you're using around 120 inch recovery to catch a fish. Uh, that it is a quite a big of a difference when you hook the fish. Uh, with that being said, if anybody's still confused on that, uh, I will, like I said, the video is down in the description where I do much more in-depth and much more basic overview for you guys on that. At number one, this is a big one, and I used to do this up until probably a year ago. I caught myself doing this quite a bit, and that is making sure you're practicing right. Now, let's say we're in a comp. We've caught, we're, we're in a practice. We've got a unique Chinook here, right? We want to test out 
uh, another lure, but we'll test out a lure right here in the same time and wonder why it's not catching th something. And it's because your unique is already out. Of course, you're not going to catch it. But this goes more in depth with other things. So let's say, oh, okay, I wasn't having much luck with the Liberty Spoon here. I'm going to switch to this setup. We're going to try a Roach Spoon. Well, what actually did help you? Uh, this is one that I used to do quite a bit. Was it you changing uh, your line? Because this is a different line on this pole. Was it the different reel speed? Was it the different lure? Was it the different hook size? Uh, when you make it, when you change something and there's more than one variable, it's really hard to tell what actually helped. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, but the more you practice, the more you'll understand that you only want to change one thing at a time a lot of times when you're practicing and not take crazy swings at stuff because it's really hard to tell what actually helped you, you know, what aspect of what you changed helped you um, because it could have been the fact that you slowed down your recovery with this slower re reel, uh, you know, or it could be maybe you're catching better over here because you're using lighter line. Um, it could have been the hook size. It could have been a lot of things. So, Try to change only one thing at a time when you're practicing, guys. So for some of you, this for some of you this might have been more. Uh, some of these might have been kind of obvious. For some of you, you probably never heard some of the stuff that I've talked about in this video. Uh, with that being said, let me know what you guys think is the most important thing uh, as become a, a becoming a better fisherman. And you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time, folks.